Hello, I first want to just say how honored I am to be a part of this inaugural Gusty Entrepreneur Cup. And a huge thank you, shout out to the judges here today and giving us this opportunity to present our business plans to you. So, without further ado, my name is Cody. I am the founder of Atomic DJs and I have been in business for the past three years, coming up in June. And over the, over the span of that three years, I've done 20 events, both weddings and organizational events. And I'm, I'm rapidly approaching $10,000 in sales combined between the two. And this has all been by myself, so I've been very busy, especially with school and everything else going on. So I, I wanted to change that. So I came up with this idea to hire fun and young college-age DJs to go out and do some of these events that I can't do. And I'm going to continue to do this by exploiting two markets that I just mentioned, the organizational events market and the wedding market. So first, the organizational event market. I've done, done and I'm currently contracted for 21 events. My current clients include the Laverne School District where I've done high school and middle school dances, uh, the Gustavus Creek Life. They've asked me to do proms and banquets, different frats and sororities here on campus. Uh, the Adrian School District, I've done middle school dances for them. And I, they, I keep getting hired because I promise clean, appropriate music for the middle schoolers. <laughs> and then other various organizations throughout southern Minnesota and the St. Peter and Mankato area. I've generated, well, I have generated and will generate $5,175 in revenue for this particular organizational event market. This is a graph that shows that. You can see that it's pretty steady and pretty prevalent at the beginning. I've made, I made a lot of money right away. But uh, no, I was, just, I was just getting my experience out there. Oops. I was getting experience and just kind of make, establishing myself as a DJ at my, at my hometown, and then I was able to land at that $250 mark. And that's, that's steadily growing. Um, the, the events that I'm contracting now, the high school dances, are uh, making me $400 in revenue. These are a few pictures of me DJing. The one on the right shows me at a middle school dance. You can't really see it. The one on the bottom left is my setup at a high school homecoming dance. And then the one up on, on the left is just some kids dancing to my music. There's tremendous opportunity here uh, for growth. Uh, there are potential clients in St. Peter, both Patty's and the Flame Bar. I've, I've talked to them and they said they'd be willing to work with me to get me in the bar scene as well. And also the St. Peter and Mankato School District. There's uh, been some issues with some DJs they've had there and I know some people who can get me into those particular places to help them DJ those as well as other bars, schools, and organizations throughout Southern Minnesota that um, I know are interested. In the fall, I've been pretty busy, but I'm on the baseball team at Gustavus, so in the spring, I get busy with my baseball season. And so I'm hoping to hire another DJ or two to help me do those spring events, and I can send them off and make a profit off of them. The wedding market, which is the more lucrative market that I'm involved in, is I've done, I've done two weddings. I'm currently contracted for five by the end of 2015 which has generated and will generate $3,775 in revenue, which is on average about 500 per wedding, but I'm hoping to get to that $700 to $800 mark. That is a very affordable price for a, a wedding DJ. As you know, um, wedding DJs average between 1,000 and 2,000 for good service. I have to say no quite often when I'm, when I'm contacted just because of restriction of time. I'm unable to drop school or drop other baseball obligations to to head up and DJ a wedding every Saturday or Friday. These are just a couple pictures. The one on the right is me dancing with some young audience members out, out there, and which, which is really one thing I want to incorporate in my, my company is just an interpersonal uh, interaction with the crowd. And then the one on the left is me and one of my buddies who DJed a wedding at, in Bloomington. There's about 400 people at the reception, so it was, it was very large. And th these are just two graphs showing my wedding revenue. The top one the two are the, is the two that I've done. Um, and then the bottom one are, is the graph showing my contracted wedding revenue. And you can see it's steadily in increasing uh, up to that $700 to $800 mark. My main costs include music, I've, I've music, equipment, and travel. I've accumulated a large collection of music already. And uh, I, I really just have to buy music based on what the client wants for each event. Um, 
my equipment. I just have to buy batteries for my wireless microphones, tape to kind of tape down my cords and make my presentation look nice, and then laptop, which has an average life of about three years, and that'll run me $1,000 depending on what laptop I decide to get. My travel costs, really gas and food along the way just to get to and from events. And then this table here shows just some events or some costs that I've incurred over the past three years. The main one being my controller, which is $850, and that'll last me the next five to 10 years. So I won't be, I won't, will not be replacing that anytime soon. So very minimal cost. The, the five main ways that I market are through Facebook. I have a Facebook page for my, my company. I have about 450 likes on it currently. And I post my pictures from events on there. It's just a list of songs that I play so people can check that out. Twitter, I give shout outs to groups that I DJ for and then I get retweets and favorites kind of generate a fan base, if you will, just so people know me a little more, a little better. And then my website, which is set to launch this summer, is gonna just have a list of services and equipment and different events that we've done on it. And the main way that I market is through word of mouth and referrals. I get a lot of people asking me after weddings, like, can I pass you on to my friend who's getting married next summer? And I say, yes, tell them I'll do it for them. So I get a lot of that and I'll, I'll hand out business cards to them as well so they can get in contact with me. So over the past three years, I've had tremendous success with this, but I know that it has much more potential than what I'm currently operating at. And I hope that I can provide jobs for college age kids and, and send them off to do some of these events for me so I can make a larger profit. Thank you so much. I will now take any questions you may have. Did this process help you think through what you needed to do next? And grow? yes, I it's it's I've kind of just done it on my own, but this has forced me to think about all these things, all these technicalities, and how I can make maybe make more money where the market's at, and uh, forced me to make a business plan, which I didn't really have. It's kind of just rough, <laughs> a rough draft of what I wanted to do. So yeah, it has. When you you talked about wanting to hire, have you had any thoughts on how big you think it could be for the Twin Cities market? How many different DJs you could support? Yeah, I once I establish myself at Gustavus and hire a couple of Gustavus students, maybe two or three, I can then show that I'm successful here and maybe move to St. John's and St. Thomas, St. Olaf, and really establish myself within the southern metro area even as a guy who, does, who moves a lot of college age DJs to events and just really make a lot of money doing it. So, yeah. so how do you scale it? Because you have one set of equipment, so you can only have one DJ out of it. Right. That's, that's the process I'm working through now. I'm trying to find money to buy another set of equipment so then I can have the one that I have as well as even a nicer one through some kind of money, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what's the uh, what's the existing DJ market like? Like in the in the Twin Cities metro, I assume there are many full time DJs or not? Yeah, there's a lot of there's a I don't know the exact number, but there are a few DJ companies who who have DJs working for them, and then like I was kind of talking about, they send DJs out to do these events, and then they'll do a lot of the client coordination with them. But in southern Minnesota, the primary, prim, the primary market that I kind of want to exploit, there's only a, like two DJs where I'm from, and then uh, like the Rochester area has a couple. But as far as that, I know I can show that this model is very successful and, and affordable for the client. One last question. You said in the business plan about how you make it really fun. That's one of the ways you differentiate. What do you do? Well, we do uh, some line dances. We we lead some some dances. Try and get the crowd involved and and get them to learn some new dances that they maybe haven't done. And, and they like it. Just seeing the look on their faces, uh, they they love it. Going out and talking to them and asking them, what kind of music do you want to hear? What what is it that you're liking about the night? Just being out there with the crowd, I think, is essential in making yourself credible. Because otherwise, it's just a guy out there or a girl playing music and no one really knows who the heck they are. So just being interpersonal with the crowd. <laughs>